you can get a good idea of how much can change in a century when you look at the modern version of the biplane, the Model T, the camera, radio, newspaper, and telephone, and the corner grocery store. In 1920, most grocery stores hadn't changed much since the 1850s. Shoppers went to owner-operated stores and handed them their shopping list. The grocer filled the order and had it delivered to the shopper's home. He also extended credit, which was necessary in farm towns with seasonal cash flows. Beginning in 1859, though, the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company started something new, the chain store. The company lowered the price of coffee and tea by becoming a wholesale buyer, distributor, and retail seller. By 1900, they were operating 198 stores across the country. In 1912, they expanded into groceries. Each store had just one employee, was plainly furnished, and operated on a small 12% margin. The concept was so successful, the company opened 1,600 stores in the next three years. The next big innovation came in 1916, the self-serve store. It started with Piggly Wiggly, with its patented floor plan. Customers entered at a turnstile, navigated four aisles, and helped themselves to over 600 clearly priced items. Now shoppers could make their own choices from a variety of competitor brands. But the discounts came at a price. The new stores stopped extending credit and stopped making deliveries. From now on, it was cash and carry. One store said their no credit policy was safer. It prevented shoppers from going into debt from impulse buying on credit. They named the store after their policy, Safeway. The next evolution of the grocery store began in 1930. It was called the supermarket. Supermarkets were eight to 10 times the size of a traditional grocery store. They offered even greater variety, and because they sold in greater volume, could discount prices even lower. Hundreds of items were priced at cost, or at just 5% markup. The Post reported, supermarket customers suddenly went mad when turned loose among the mass display of merchandise. Instead of buying the one item they needed, they bought in threes and half dozens, as if afraid they couldn't buy again at that price. By 1936, there were 1,200 supermarkets in the U.S., and many more being built. The next evolution of the grocery store began in the early 1960s. It was called the Retail Supercenter, or the Super Retailer, or the Big Box Store. They were enormous. The first supercenters, Woolco, Meyer, and Walmart, occupied 5,000 square feet. Today, they're around 20,000 square feet. Is this the ultimate grocery store? Perhaps not. Even as far back as 1938, the Post concluded, whatever the food store of the future may be, it's going to be a better one. This video is brought to you by the Saturday Evening Post Digital Archives. Saturday Evening Post members can explore our 200-year-old archive and receive six issues of the Post Print Edition for only $15 a year. Subscribe today at the link below.